Copernicus and today is 29th of April 2021. So what's special actually about this day? The special is that I am really very happy today and that is all because if we bring ourselves 41 years back in past means in the year of 1980 on 29 April. So what was special on that day? The scientists, the mathematicians, all the fellows of the Cambridge and all the students of the Cambridge University were waiting in the lecture hall. For what? For what actually they were waiting? They were waiting for a 38 year old new location professor of mathematics and whose name was Stephen William Hawking. My favorite physicist, my favorite mathematician, my favorite author and everything of my favorite in science. Because his was the first book I had read, A Brief History of Time and he is an inspiration for me. He made me fall in the field of physics, fall in love with physics and he is my favorite as a whole and when he I know that actually he becomes the location professor of mathematics it is a great moment for me and I would like to tell you that in the year of 1980 on 29th April Stephen Hawking delivered his first lecture as location professor his inaugural lecture as location professor of mathematics and that was is the end in sight for theoretical physics Okay, let me also tell you that whenever it is predicted that this end in sight for theoretical physics, there is a new branch of theoretical physics developed. So we do not know yet what is going to happen new in the field of physics. Okay, per, uh, perhaps that may be that there is a fifth force of nature which scientists are talking about. But Hawking ended saying that it was. Hawking says that really the end of theoretical physics is in sight. We are able to see that there's going to be end of theoretical physics. Because as we discover the complete unified theory, as we unify the general relativity and quantum mechanics, if it again happen, if it can happen, then when we unify the quantum mechanics to the general theory of relativity and understand gravity at quantum level, then that will be the end of theoretical physics. But I would also like to mention it has been predicted many times. In 1928, Max Born said that physics as we know it will just end in a few months, in six months. And later, even Max Planck, the great physicist who is credited for the development of quantum mechanics in 1900, solving the black body problem on 14 December, Actually, when he was 16 and when he was to enter the arena of physics, so he was also told that it is worthless to f enter in f the field of physics anymore because there's nothing important left to discover now. Here, Hawking ended saying that actually we are able to see the end of theoretical physics because it's really gonna end. Hawking even one time predicted in 1973. Hawking talked about the theory of everything being discovered till the end of the century. But it wasn't possible. He also later said that he now predicted that actually he was wrong. Perhaps he was just wrong. So perhaps he was wrong. Even a string theory talks about the theory of everything, which I have not understood. Okay, back to our point. Location chair. Location professor of mathematics, my dream. You can say my passion, my ambition, and my everything I really want to become. And the reason is why I want to become the location professor is still unknown. I do not know why I want to become the location professor of mathematics for what reason and all and all. But I just want to become. And if someone becomes that a great moment of happiness for me. And if my favorite physicist becomes. If my favorite author, my favorite mathematician, scientist becomes my inspiration becomes so that's the greatest moment for me even sir isaac newton holded the position of location professor of mathematics location chair for the first one who was able to hold the location chair was Sir Isaac Borrow. He was Isaac Borrow. He was the first one to hold the location chair. And the next was Sir Isaac Newton, the great physicist, mathematician you can call, who discovered the binomial theorem as well as calculus in the field of mathematics, while the diffraction of light, reflections of light, refractions of light, and laws of motion universal law of gravitation, Newton's laws of Cooley and all and all and you can see he has worked in the every branch of physics as well as mathematics. 
Newton hold it the post of location professor. That's why the post is said to be great. The post is said to be great because it is holded by Sir, the great genius Sir Isaac Newton, who is one of the most influential people in the entire human history. Of course, since he passed his life with very much of poverty, but later he improved his conditions and today we read him in books. And when we open a textbook, the first name which we can look over is Sir Isaac Newton because we credit him mostly and as well as Galileo Galilei for the development of physics whether that is classical physics and modern physics is also based on classical physics because without the help of classical mechanics it is impossible I would like to say many people say nothing is impossible yeah but this is impossible without classical mechanics it is impossible to have a foundation for modern physics or modern mechanics then new location professor of mathematics came and many up to now have come not many there are still in 358 years there have been only 19 location professor of mathematics presently michael cates is location professor and the ex location professor this means that before michael cates was michael green a particularly who was researching in the field of string theory and a master of string theory there have been many more location professor like Charles Babb is the father of computer and who was a mathematician as well as a computer scientist and even Paul Dirac who was a great person, was really a great person, a great man and a great quantum physicist who had worked during the quantum revolution when the quantum revolution was going on. Then the Solvay meetings were going on when they were invited the great and great scientists like Albert Einstein, like but just like Marie Curie and you can say Erwin Schrödinger. So there was also Paul Dirac among them. He's really a great quantum physicist, worked a lot in the field of quantum mechanics. So he was as well a location professor of mathematics and that's a great thing. That's amazing and very great thing for him being the location professor of mathematics. And here was the 38 year old, so young, at the very young age was Stephen Hawking, the location new professor of mathematics in the year of 1980. Because being paralyzed, he was not able to move his body. He was not actually able to move his body. But still Stephen Hawking showed show to us that as the universe has no edges or no boundaries. He has also worked in the field of no boundary proposal. The universe has no boundaries. There can be no boundaries to humans. There can be no boundaries to human minds. Stephen Hawking proved to us there are no edges to our mind, no boundaries to our mind. It can extend to wherever we want to extend it. But up to when we apply force. Like, I would also like to explain it through the laws of physics. If you take here, suppose here is a kind of surface and I want a ball. I want to roll a ball through the surface. Then what will be happening here according to, to the laws of physics, Newtonian mechanics. So when I roll the ball, I'll apply the force. The, as I leave applying the force, it will continue with the same constant velocity. But here's friction. This is you can call ideal condition. But if we come to the real world, if we come to the real world, people say that one time you have to hard work and other and automatically you will start going. But no, we have to constantly hard work because if you come to the real world here, there is actually friction. So when you will stop applying force, friction will oppose the motion and the body will come to rest. So many say that only one time you'll have to hard work, then you'll learn smart work and all and all. And then you don't need to apply any force, but this is not true. You constantly need to apply force and then you'll go where is your destination and you'll do a positive displacement. So there are actually no boundaries but up to where we want to extend our human minds, our power, our capability or ability. So you can but till the time you have to hard work, you have to work hard very much what Professor Stephen Hawking did. We can describe that actually he discovered Hawking radiation and Big Bang theory, Big Bang singularity and no boundary proposal, Big Stan and Hawking theorem, no hair theorem. So we can just do, he discovered all of these things. He won this prize, that prize. So we can just say he wrote a brief history of time and theory of everything. He wrote a briefer history of time, the grand design. We can just say 
But what he worked hard for all of that. How much he worked hard, how many years he spent in writing A Brief History of Time. We see that A Brief History of Time is so great work. is actually the international bestseller better than this book cannot exist. But what is required to see that how much hard work Professor Hawking did in the field at the moment when he tried to write the book. When he wanted to explain physics to everyone, he, when he want, when. Since it was believed that now, when the quantum revolution started, when the quantum mechanics started, the field of quantum mechanics was developed, physics was just little far, physics became little far away from normal people. Because quantum mechanics is too complex with its math, math, mathematics. So it was very difficult. It was only a few scientists, few mathematicians, selected people could explain it to normal people who were not actually physicists. But Hawking proved that not only quantum mechanics, he can explain relativity, explain string theory, ultimate theory, quantum electrodynamics and everything, quantum theory of gravity, quantum gravity and everything to even normal people who are not physicists and who are not familiar with physicists. He proved it that he can do it. He can even explain those things which Feynman, Richard Feynman and Paul Dirac could not explain. That's why his successor of the, the great physicists, the great scientists like Dirac, Newton, Borrow, Babbage, and he was the successor. Still, we just have a new successor who are just like Green, okay? Then was Michael Green, and after that, we also at the present time is Michael Cates because sadly, Stephen Hawking is not among us. But his older books, his brief answers to the big questions, which I loved a lot, all the books he has written, all the research papers he has written are still among us. And when we discover the theory of everything, when we discover the quantum theory of gravity, when we complete either the string theory, the credit which will, shall be given should be given mostly to Professor Stephen Hawking for his all of questions that this is also a question. Is the end inside for theoretical physics? Stephen Hawking is known for his question. As Newton was known for his answers, Hawking was known mostly for his questions. And his book, A Brief History of Time, was known for its questions. That how was the beginning of the universe? Actually, did universe have a beginning? Did time have a beginning? Will time ever flow backwards? Or can the reverse be possible? That if the glass is getting broken by striking to the ground. Is it pos possible that the glass will be pieces will be collected again to form the glass and will get again on the table? Is the time direction away? You can say in the opposite direction possible. And this question is the end inside for theoretical physics. What is actually present in the mind of God? What God is thinking now to do about it? Does God play dice? So do the events occur in a random manner rather than in a systematic manner? And if events occur in a random manner, there's no requirement for physics. And what is the condition? Because there can be Hawking writes in his book, A Brief History of Time, that there can be three conditions of the universe, three conditions only. The first can be there is an ultimate theory of the universe. The theory of everything which we might discover if it is possible to discover if it really exists. The second condition is that no, there is no theory of everything, but there are many theories. We can explain the universe through many theories, but not unify all of them to form a single theory. And the third condition is there is no theory of the universe. And God then plays the dice here. Just like I would also like to uh, particularly focus on the phrase about God playing the dice, because this was first of all said by Einstein, God does not play the dice. It doesn't mean that God does not rule the universe. It actually means that God does not want the universe behave in a random manner because when we throw that throw the dice like when we are playing a Ludo game so we just throw the dice so it can be a random manner that whatever whether that is a six or a one or something like two three four five so that is random but here in our universe particularly perhaps God does not play the dice but in the third condition of the universe 
there is possibility for God playing the dice. It means there is no theory of the universe. Events can't be predicted in a systematic manner. So there doesn't exist any theory or there doesn't exist any physics. But till the time we have seen that God particularly made the universe thinking that it will follow the rules of nature and it must follow the rules of nature. If it doesn't follow the rules of nature, so the nature shouldn't exist and the universe shouldn't exist. Here up to now we have seen that God does not play the dice at all. So we just see this was his topic basically. I am very glad today and I also want to be the location professor of mathematics. So I want to be the successor of like Michael Cates who is the present location professor of mathematics. And here was basically the question is the end inside for theoretical physics. That was my happiness. Actually I just cannot show my happiness in the video. I actually really cannot show my happiness in the video. How much I've been waiting for months that I will surely make video over it. I'll surely make for months I've been waiting. Today the date has come. So today I'm just very glad. That was all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching this video.